Hello, my name is Brittany Thurman. I am the Studio Programs Manager at the Speed Art Museum. In celebration of our newest exhibition, Andy Warhol Revelation, I am excited to share with you an Andy Warhol inspired art making activity. Andy Warhol is known for his pop art. Um, we have some of his religious paintings on view. But this particular activity is something that's a little bit different. In the 1950s, Andy Warhol developed an art making technique entitled Blotted Lie. He would take the images that he produced and show a variety of those images to clients and to companies so, they, so that they had more than one image to choose from. Well, the interesting concept with blotted line is that you take an image that turns into a blotted form of itself and then you can recreate that image in different ways. So today we are going to recreate Andy Warhol's blotted line. I love the use of this shoe. I love the distinct look that it has, very distinct of the 1950s. But today we are going to do a little bit, something a little bit different. We aren't going to use the shoe, but we will use images that we adore. For instance, today I will use the Louisville skyline. I will also use one of my favorite books, They All Saw a Cat by Brendan Wenzel. You can use images that you have found in a magazine. For instance, I found these images, this very abstract um, cut out from a magazine that would make a very interesting blotted line design. I also found a hat. So you know that Andy Warhol is known for his pop art. So one thing that you can do at home is if you don't want to print off an image off the computer, you can scroll through a magazine or scroll through the internet and find an image that relates to you. So today we are going to use this skyline of Louisville, Kentucky first. So I'm going to pull down my screen so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. The first step is to take your source image, this image that you have found in a magazine or that you printed off the internet, you're going to lay it on your countertop. You're then going to take a piece of tracing paper and you will place that tracing paper on top. Now, tracing paper, we are just going to do exactly what that paper says. We are going to trace this image using a pencil. I like my pencils pointy and sharp, so we are just going to take that pencil and trace this outline. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, that is okay. You can use any type of paper that is not as absorbent um, that you can see through. This will make it easy, of course, for you to trace your image. This will also make it easy when we blot our image so that our marker that we will use does not run out and so that we can get a very distinct blotted result. So I am almost finished tracing downtown. You see some of those well-known buildings. And now I am just going to remove this source image and set it aside because we don't, we don't need this anymore. The next step is to take a piece of watercolor paper or a piece of cardstock. Maybe you just have heavy paper on hand and that will work too. So we're going to take this piece of watercolor paper and place it on top of our tracing paper like so. The next supply is tape. We are going to take our tape, I'm going to take two pieces, and we are going to hinge the edges of our two pieces of paper together. Basically, we are kind of creating a two-page book 
by taping these two pages together, these two sheets together. So now you have some sort of book. You can open this book, you have your tracing paper on one side, you have your watercolor paper on the other side. The next step, I'm just going to put a sheet of paper underneath my tracing paper just to be on the safe side. Um, and we are going to begin to outline our traced image. For this part of the activity, you will need a marker or preferably a black Sharpie. I know that if uh, parents at home, if you have young children, you might not want them using a black Sharpie and that is a-okay. You can use a um, washable marker instead. I like the idea of using a washable marker because then you can use a color besides black. We are going to start by tracing section by section of our traced image. So I'm going to begin with this first section. I'm just going to go over that image that I traced a second ago. And I'm going over it twice, you don't have to, but I am because I want a very distinct result. So now you're going to fold your piece of watercolor cardstock paper on top and you're going to press down on that marker image. Open up your two pages and now you should see a blotted image. The very interesting thing about blotted line is that of course the image is blotted. Blotted means that it's going to have a very distinct, a very unique look. It is going to look dotted, it is going to look broken, and that is the look that we are going for. Fold, press, open, continue. Fold, press, open, continue. Fold, press, open, continue. Fold, press, open, continue. Okay, I am almost done with these downtown buildings. Fold the paper. Press the paper. Open the paper and continue. I'm on my last building. Fold. Press, press, press. You can um, go over some of those uh, trace designs that you did earlier. Maybe there's just still some ink that needs to transfer. Open, continue. I'm just going to go over a few of these lines because I do want a very distinct look. Press, 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 open. Okay, I'm just going to do this one more time. Fold, press, open. So now we have our blotted line design, our blotted line image. We are going to remove our tape and our tissue paper. These two things we do not need anymore. I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to show you the blotted image that I created. So this now is the outline of Louisville, Kentucky. I could say that I want to stop here, that I love this image and that is A-OK, -okay, that's perfectly fine. I could say that this is the result that I want and I am finished. But I am not going to say that at this moment because I want to add something a little bit different. I want to add color. Uh, Louisville is a very vibrant city and I want to add those vibrations to this piece. So I'm going to take watercolor. I have my watercolor pen 
or brush and I have my different colors of watercolor now at home maybe some kids are wondering what colors I should create I think that I am going to use purple light green and orange today so I'm taking my watercolor brush I'm dipping it dipping it in my purple and I'm going to add a splash of watercolor to this piece. Now sometimes um, the result that you want depends on how vibrant you want your watercolor to be. Uh, maybe you want your watercolor very bright, very purple. Um, perhaps you want your watercolor light and not bright at all. Maybe you want it to be very subtle and its appearance on the page. I have my green. I'm going to take some orange for this logo of mine. And I am almost finished painting this image. You don't have to use watercolor. Maybe you don't have watercolor at home, and that's fine too. You can use paint. You can use food coloring to make your own watercolor. You can use crayons. You can take a stamp, and instead of painting each um, interior of the outline, you can stamp instead. And maybe you have young children at home, some toddlers who really want to learn those early concepts of shapes, numbers, the alphabet. This is a great way to introduce colors. This is a great way to introduce shapes if you want to use stamps instead of paint. The possibilities really are endless. Maybe the design that you chose at first is actually a design of different shapes. Your preschoolers can take those, trace over to learn their shapes, blot their image, add a color into that, and you have um, a lesson. So here is my finished outline of Louisville. I love it. I love how distinct it is. I am going to move on to my next project. They all saw a cat. One of my favorite picture books. Maybe your children at home have some of their favorite picture books too. Um, maybe it's Thank You Amu. Maybe it's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. What a great way to retell the story through this art making process. I am going to begin to trace the cat and we all saw a cat. I am just taking my tracing paper, placing it on top of my book, and tracing this outline of the cat. Now, if you have read They All Saw a Cat, you know that the cat, um, they see this cat in different forms. And with Blotted Line, we create our artwork from one single image into different forms and what a great way this would be to retell the story of they all saw a cat by decorating the interior of this book um, of this uh, artwork different ways so I'm just going to outline a cat Okay, and I'm finished. So I'm going to remove this book and place it in a safe place so that it doesn't get any watercolor on it. I'm going to take my watercolor paper or my cardstock, and once again, I am going to hinge these two sheets together. So I am taking tape, Taping those corners together. 
opening my book of paper, taking a sheet of paper to place under a cat, and now that I have my marker once again, I am going to outline this image. Starting with the A, another great way to introduce the alphabet to kids at home. Folding my paper, blotting my image, taking my C, folding my paper, blotting my image. Taking my A again. Sight word, cat. Taking my T. I'm going to do my T one more time. Okay, so now comes the fun part. I am taking the head of my cat, folding, blotting, taking the whiskers, looks like, looks like a rooster. I'm taking my collar. Pressing down. Okay, here comes the cat. Okay. Have his leg. His body. Okay, and the rest of his body. Opening up these two pages, and now I have my blotted image of the cat from They All Saw a Cat. So once again, I am just going to remove the tracing paper, remove the tape, put those to the side. Yes, this image is reversed. Yes, that is okay. Um, so this is our art. This is what we're making. So, um, and now instead of using watercolor, I'm actually just going to use crayons to color in this image. I have green for my A. I have yellow, orange for my C. T. Okay, now for the body. I'm going to make this cat blue. Filling in the body of my cat. And once again, if you don't want to use crayons, you can use watercolor, you can use paint, colored pencil, marker. If you have little stamps at home, you can use those stamps to decorate the interior of your image. You can make your own paint. Another interesting idea is to press or glue something onto your image. So maybe you have pressed some flowers. You can use an assortment of flowers to fill in this image. Andy Warhol used what we call gold leaf to fill in some of his images. And this is the result from They All Saw a Cat. So I hope that you have enjoyed this art making activity. I hope that you create some interesting 
beloved line designs inspired by Andy Warhol. I know that whatever you create will be magnificent. We cannot wait to see it here at the Speed Art Museum. When you have finished your creation, you can use the hashtag ArtSparksFromHome to send that creation to us and we would love to see what you have created. Thank you for viewing this video, for watching me on this journey of creating art. Thank you for the art that you have made and thank you so much for your support of the speed. Without you, you, without you, without your support, we would not be able to create the art activities, the programs that we have. Thank you. Bye.